Hi gang and uh, thank you for finding time to join me again here with. Now although I've already done I think it's three videos on uh, uh, changing your uh, bulbs for LEDs in locomotive coaches etc and although the three videos have similarities but they actually all kind of cover it in a different way um, I'd always thought about doing a video um, from the beginning of time with lighting in locomotives, rolling stock, model trains and uh, here it is. Now. The reason uh, that's inspired me to go ahead and do it now is quite simply, recently I've been asked so many times about changing lighting um, in, in a, a vehicle, we'll call it a vehicle because it could be anything, um, uh, where you have bicolours. In other words, as an example, you have a, a locomotive, say a diesel, and you want the lighting to change from white in the forward mode to red in the rearward mode and yes it's so simple to do and we are going to cover that right at the end of this video but to start off with I need to teach you some basics I am hoping by the time we get to the end of this video those of you who feel a bit uncomfortable with electronics or electric um, I'm hoping that you will feel much more confident in having a go and doing things for yourself I'm going to try and make it as easy as I absolutely possibly can okay before we actually commence with this there's just a basic thing that you need to try and understand there is pretty much two types of electricity one is called AC which stands for alternating current the other is called DC which stands for direct current now in both cases we're just going to have two wires like this which are coming from a box standard controller you know doesn't matter what you use it's just a box standard train controller it's as simple as that now most locomotives do run on DC, the direct current for the motor. Now, with AC electricity, alternating current, it's actually doing exactly what that says. It's alternating and it actually switches from one side to the other of the two wires 50 times a second. That's what it means by AC 50 cycles. AC doesn't really have a, a polarity as such. Now DC, which as I say most train motors do run on, uh, and which is what you get from your train controllers, regardless of which type it is, DC flows in one direction only, in other words, direct current. Now, with the control of your controller turned one way, so we say the forward mode, this is your positive, that is your negative, and the electricity is flowing in that way only. Now, when you reverse it, it reverses so this becomes the positive that becomes a negative and now the electricity is flowing one way again but this time it's that way now looking into the birth of when uh, lighting was fitted into model railway items uh, I can only trace Triang back to 1955 uh, where they the very first thing they brought out with lighting in it was the R54 Transcontinental Pacific Loco which has a light at the front and also the Transcontinental R55 which is the single ended uh, red and silver diesel and that too had a light at the front. Now that of course is the mid 50s. Now it's fairly okay to assume that some other manufacturer prior to Triang may have fitted some lighting but this is something I can't find out very much about. My gut feeling tells me uh, people like um, Fleischmann, Marklin, Pico, back there in the 50s, maybe, you know, even before 1955, actually did start fitting some lighting in some of their stock. But either way, what I'm going to show you now is how it all began. Here then, you can see I put an ordinary 12 volt bulb between the two connections from the controller. This is what you would call a bulb or its proper term is an, an incandescent lamp or a tungsten filament lamp right so if I turn the controller on in, in one direction you will see that of course the bulb lights up to there and we back it off and then we go the other way now remember the current has changed direction now but the bulb still lights and that is quite simply because an incandescent lamp or quite simply a bulb it's not polarity sensitive. This is how the first lighting in any railway stuff was actually done. The next thing that came along uh, as an example with Triang's R159, the double-ended blue and yellow diesel, very popular, it had a light at each end. So did the R55, sorry, the R155 diesel switcher, various versions that had a light at each end as well. So as you can see here, I have literally just soldered two of the bulbs together 
and I've put the cables on from the controller and we'll show you again. Now turn the controller one way and we now have the front and back lights exactly as they are on those locomotives working. We turn it the other way and again although the direct current is flowing the opposite way the bulbs again will both light up. So that was pretty much the next step in the evolution of lighting in model railway. Now, the next thing that came along a few years later, though I can't be sure who did it first and which company that was and which locomotive or whatever it was in, but what happened is uh, people wanted them to be directional. Now this is here, this is a, a very old fashioned rectifier. Um, that is called a selenium or a selenium rectifier. Uh, they were a little bit big and bulkier, although it's not terribly big. That actually came out of a, a Hornby ACHO French um, locomotive. And then later on, oh, I'd say around about the 60s-ish, then uh, this came out, which does the same job. So we'll take that one away. And this is called a silicon diode. Again, you can call it a rectifier. It is a half wave rectifier. And what that does, you can see it has a, a mark here, a line around it there, which is the positive output. This is the, neg uh, the negative input there. Or I should say that is the input, that is the output. Now, the thing is with the diode, it only allows the current to pass one way, that way, from this end through to that end. And that is advantageous. So let me show you how it was first done. Now you remember initially we put the two wires on the bulb and it lit up both ways with the controller. But now we've put a diode in series with one of the legs of the bulb. That means it comes through the diode to this leg but the other leg is directly connected as it was before. Now by doing this the diode will only let the current pass that way from there through to that end with the mark there on it, the positive mark. And I'll show you, I'll turn the controller one way. There we go, we have the light as we did initially, but now that is fully the other way. The diode here is blocking it, which means it's only going the one direction, which means if we do the same thing again, but reverse it, you'll see what happens. So, as you can see here, we're now back to two bulbs, which you saw originally, but we're now using two of the diodes. And just to recap and explain, from this side of the output of the controller, it goes through this diode with the positive, the silver band there, to this bulb, and the other end of the bulb goes to the other side of the controller. But if we look at it the other way around as well, this side also goes through a diode with the silver positive side there. That goes into this bulb, whose other end is connected directly to that end of the controller. So it's the same thing, like that, but reversed. OK, now we'll try the controller. Watch. There's one direction. And now we bring it down and go the other way. And there's the other direction. Now that is how you do your front and back lighting to light up in the direction that the loco is going in. And it's so, so simple, the diodes block the DC current either way to each bulb accordingly. This kind of wiring using the diodes and the bulbs has been around for years and years. It was used for donkey's years. But then came the advent of the LED and that is where things started to change. So let's move on yet again. And so then to LEDs. These days they come with a variety of sizes, colours, shapes, just a few examples for you here of what's available and many many more than this as well. Now with the technology as it is now in 2017, um, LEDs are out there in the world in their trillions and because it's part of our life now we just take it for granted. But I bet not many of you know this. Now. Electroluminescence is a phenomenon that was discovered by a British experimenter and get this, in 1907. It was 20 years later in 1927 when a Russian inventor um, called Oleg something, I can't remember his full name, um, yeah, reported that he had created the first LED. I also remember reading that his research was distributed um, in, in the scientific journals of uh, Britain, uh, Germany and the Soviets, um, but practical use was never made of the discovery for several decades. 
The first practical and commercial lead uh, was a product that was done by Texas Instruments and I believe it was around 1962. So yeah, the technology has been around a long time. Having just said a brief history there on the origins of the LED, of course we know that they are used worldwide and they are used for a multitude of reasons. We see them everywhere in life around us. So let's get back to the fact that they are used in model railway these days and they are absolutely perfect for the job. Just one brief step backwards, earlier on in the video you saw a bog standard bulb here and you saw how we put a diode in series with it to cause it to only work in one direction in other words the diode blocks the supply in the reverse direction which we discussed earlier let's then take a first look at an led which is very common one five millimeter in diameter red one very popular color and you can clearly see it has two legs and you can clearly see one of them is shorter than the other now can we literally just change this for a bulb the answer is no you can't in order to be able to use an led in place of a normal bulb we need to add something to the equation you can see here now that i've just added a resistor and i've added it to just one leg of the led it doesn't matter which leg but it has to go in one of them and it's imperative that you do this for any led or leds that you use the thing is, there's a formula on the internet that tells you how to do this, but there's three things you need to know. You need to know the forward voltage of the LED, you need to know the forward current of the LED, and you need to know the supply voltage, which in this case is coming from a 12 volt controller for model railway, but the 12 volts, it quite often can go up as high as 16, so I would recommend you do your calculation at 16 volts. I will put a link about this in the description box of how you can get to the calculator to tell you what to choose that resistor to be. In this case, and the LEDs I'm using, it's a 1.2K, which in electronic terms means 1200 ohms or 1200 ohms or a, a 1K2. It's all the same. Right, here's another LED and here's a diode, what you saw earlier, which we use with an ordinary bulb to make it directional. Now, they're obviously completely physically different. The characteristics are completely different as well, but they do have one thing in common and that is the word diode. Remember this diode blocks the current in one way, we used it for the reversion of an ordinary bulb, but LED is a light emitting diode and the word diode still applies, whereas this blocks the electricity or the flow of the electricity one way, an LED will do the exact same thing. The only difference between them is the reverse bias on an, a, a diode like this will stand a lot more than using the LED as the reverse bias but they still do stand it to a certain point so let me explain further and the best way to do that is to actually show you it happening so as you can see here like we did with the bulb with the diode in series with it we've got the connections from the controller onto the one leg of the LED onto the one leg of the resistor which the LED has to have but we haven't got a diode to stop it from working both ways. But watch, if I turn the controller one way, then we have the LED is illuminated. If I turn it the opposite way, it's not illuminated, which means the LED, the diode section, shall we say, of it, is blocking it in reverse. And it will stand it, quite a while and at quite a reasonable voltage and current but you have to be careful not to overload it so there we go again there's your forward motion with the or re rearward motion whichever you want to call it uh, the led is in, on in that way and it's not on that way so let me show you how you can protect it a bit more against reverse bias and this can be quite simply done by soldering a diode directly across the led the positive of the diode marked by this uh, line here goes to the long leg of the LED which we already have the resistor on anyway and the obviously the other side of the diode goes to the other side of the LED which of course is the short leg here and if I turn the controller one way they we've got it as we just saw a few minutes ago and we turn it the other way and it's not working and again which you saw a few minutes ago but this time this diode is taking the reverse bias uh, off of the back end of the LED and helping it to withstand the reverse current and voltage. 
one thing we don't have here in this scenario is we don't have a motor normally this circuit would be in a locomotive for argument's sake which has a motor now a motor creates what is called emf which is electromotive force um, look it up on the internet you can learn a lot about it from that but electromotive force is also uh, generated by the brushes on the motor which are sparking and although although most motors in all locomotives do have some kind of suppression it's still not perfect and LEDs, light emitting diodes, do not like EMF and this diode helps to prevent that being a problem. Moving on now to the fitting of bi-directional colouring of lighting in a, a locomotive or a coach or a dummy or whatever uh, which is something like I said earlier in the video I get asked for on loads of occasions how do you do this and it's really really simple let me just show you first of all we've got two LEDs here and as I showed you a little bit earlier we've got a long leg and a short leg we've got a short leg and a long leg and that is your red and that is your white and we need to now wire these in such a way that when the item is going in the forward mode it's lit up white and when it's going backwards it's lit up red which would be the normal way of things in real life so I'll explain to you how you can do this and it's really really simple and here is how it's done it's really 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 easy to do now I'll explain to you we have the two LEDs we have the white and we have the red forwards and reverse and the way you do this I know it may sound confusing but you need to trust me here what you do you take your two LEDs and what you do you solder them you reverse one of them and you solder one short leg onto the long leg of one you solder the other long leg onto the short leg of that one we still need to put the ballast resistor here which in this case again is our 1200 ohms 1.2k it only needs to go to the join of two of the legs like I said one will be a short one one will be a long one the other two legs are joined again one a short one long and the controller goes between those two legs and the ballast resistor and if you don't believe me here's the control one way there's your forward of the locomotive or the dummy or whatever if I go with the other way with the controller ba -boom, there's the reverse direction it really is that simple to do so again as a recap solder two LEDs together a long leg onto the short leg of the other one and then of course the long leg and the short leg onto the other one will give you the opportunity to create this circuit with a single ballast resistor and the reverse of the controller will give you the forwards and back lighting as requested now in this chapter I'm going to show you how you can get even more out of the LEDs that you've now just converted from your uh, old loco or coach which has had an old bulb in it this is a potentiometer you could probably call it a volume control or a base control or whatever because it's the same kind of thing but this is a miniature one and it's what's called a preset because it doesn't have a shaft where you would normally put a knob on it this is basically you, you set it and leave it preset is the term right if I just tip this up for you hopefully like so that's it now again you well, I'm, I'm sure you can I think it's focusing all right now right oh, still it has three legs one there one further back and one here now you can see I have soldered the center leg to one of the outside legs it doesn't matter which one you solder it to uh, the only difference that will make is it that when you turn it it will go one way and or if you solder the opposite one it will go the opposite way it's not really a big deal so I so say you solder one the middle leg to one of the outer legs and then we can include this into the circuit now why would we want to insert this into the circuit well here's one I've already prepared we've got one side of the controller here as we as we've had all the way through the video we've got a single led there and we've got the reverse bias diode across it just there and we've got the resistor here which like you know i've said the, the led always has to have that resistor very critical that you don't omit that and now we've put this little potentiometer in here and what that's going to do it's going to turn the brightness down which is great because most of the time an LED at full brightness, particularly the modern ones, is actually far too much. So let me show you. Right, there we are. She's on full pelt there. So if I get my little trimming tool and keep my hands out of the way, just get hold of the little potentiometer. Uh, there you go. There you go. Look at that look. 
Yep, superb. Now that's right round, but you must not leave this resistor out because if you did, when you turn the potentiometer up full, like so, what's going to happen is that now shorts, which means you wouldn't have a resistance in here at all and you will blow the LED. So keep your res ballast resistor in there and you add your potentiometer in as well. And as you can see, I've, I've put it onto this leg here, this one here. It doesn't matter, you I could have put it onto that side. It wouldn't make any difference at all which side you, you put it on from the source of your supply. Also worth mentioning to you, this potentiometer here is actually 20k, that's 20,000 ohms. As you know from earlier in the video, the ballast is that, the, that I'm using because it's right for these LEDs what I have in stock, that's a 1.2 or 1,200 ohms. This is 20,000 and the reason it's so high is because with a single LED, there's so little current being pulled, around about 30 milliamps usually, that this it needs to be quite high to control just the one single LED. The more LEDs you put on, or if you were using a strip like that, which we're going to show you in a bit, then that's, that would be more LEDs and the value of this and has to come down. But there's no rule of thumb. Um, you know, sometimes you can come down as low as 2000 ohms. It will depend on how much load um, you put actually on the potentiometer itself. Right guys, I want to show you this. We're now going to talk about a strip of LEDs. Now these come on a roll. I'm sure you know that now. You've probably seen me mention it in other videos. But uh, just to recap on something, these are cuttable in sections. It's usually three LEDs cut, three LEDs cut and so on. Now the way this works, if you've got three LEDs and yes, we've spoken about this ballast resistor always having to be there on an LED and it does but on these strips it's actually part of the board it's actually on the circuit strip so you can see you've got an LED there's one resistor that's the ballast resistor and there's the other two LEDs so those three LEDs are working off that one ballast resistor which is great and then you've got the same again look LED two more there all three on that ballast resistor and this repeats itself for every three along the chain now that means then that we don't have to put a ballast resistor on because like I say they're already there on the board and then as you can see here we've got one side of the supply onto there I've got the other side of the supply here through this potentiometer now this one is a 4700 ohms which is you know 5000 ohms 47 is the preferred value um, and the reason for that because I did try this there's no point in showing it but I did try it the 20,000 ohm one here with six LEDs on it as opposed to one it definitely was too high so now I'm down to 5000 ohms or thereabouts and we're going to power it up there we go and I can tell you that is definitely the lowest setting and you will see now if I can keep my hand out of the way for you it's getting brighter look at that look and if they're inside a coach or a carriage then you, you definitely really need to turn them down because I fell for this one myself and I've ended up having to change it uh, I've used a fixed resistor but that's no big deal. Uh, right, what we're going to do now in the next chapter is show you what else you can do with your LEDs to improve things even more. In that last chapter then where we finished off with this strip illuminated and we have control of it from a brightness point of view, um, what we didn't talk about is this. At the moment the controller is in the forward direction. I'm now going to reverse it and watch. Now we're fully reversed. And we're not illuminated so cast your minds back to earlier on in the video remembering what I said that LEDs have the ability to do reverse bias in other words they block the voltage in the reverse and they won't light up and that's why that's not lit up there but it will do in the forward mode now this is a problem because if we wanted to put this strip in a coach for argument's sake we don't want it to be off in forward and on in forwards and off in backwards we want it to be on either way and there is a way of course to do this and again as you saw a little bit earlier with the single LED here and this particular circuit yes we have control of the brightness we've got the ballast resistor which it needs we've got the reverse bias diode which it also needs to help protect it in the reverse mode but that is in the forward mode and that is in the rearward mode and again 
if this was on the front of a locomotive then that would be fine because you would only want it on in the forward mode or assumably you would but there may be other applications where you want the LED to be on in both ways and again we need to make a modification and this can be done and I'll show you how and the way we do it is with this little baby here I have mentioned this before in other videos but I thought it would be a good idea to do everything all in one video right from the very beginning of lighting in, in uh, railway equipment, uh, model railway equipment, uh, right through to the end. So it's all in the one video instead of in bits and bobs. This then is called a rectifier and it's proper term this particular type is called a bridge rectifier and here are the inputs to it and here are the outputs which are clearly marked positive and negative and in simple terms what this does it regardless of which way the input it goes into it it will always come out the same way on the other side which means if we use one of these in between our controller and the lighting of whatever description of LEDs it will always work in both the forward and reverse directions of the controller because this makes sure that it never changes over and to keep lighting on like in a coach or an item that you want lit up in both ways this is the baby that will do it for you and so just to show you how so simple this is and how easily it works correctly let me show you there's the bridge rectifier what we've just discussed the negative of it is here which is on the negative end of the LED there the positive is on the positive end of the LED there from the output there and that means what we've done is literally that crocodile clip was originally clipped onto this leg here and that crocodile clip was originally clipped onto this here which means we just put the bridge rectifier in between now watch here's forward on the controller yeah we've got the LED now backwards on the controller and we've still got the LED and it's this baby that's going to do that for you stay with me and the same thing is applying here on the strip you can see the bridge rectifier here the negative of it there is connected to the uh, potentiometer which is connected to the negative side of the strip itself which is correct the positive side of the rectifier coming out goes to the positive and we don't need the balance resistor because like I say they're already on the board there so this is now going to go in the forward mode and we have LEDs we go to the rearward mode and they are still on and again it's this little baby that's doing this for you brilliant and there's one more thing we can do to make the LED lighting even 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 so much better now watch if I take this clip off turn the controller up doesn't matter which way now because we've got the bridge rectifier in and if I just touch the wire on you've got your LEDs or LED whichever the case may be and if I take it off they're off and on and off which means that when the power is off they're going to go off obviously it also means that if you lose power momentarily going across points the frogs of points or bits of dirty track etc they're going to flicker and we can stop that as well so let's do that right now and so to the final part of the video and of course the final chapter here's what we're going to do to uh, add my uh, shall we say anti-flicker circuit uh, it's not particularly in my idea it's been around for a while but I call it that mine anyway now I've already prepared three here so I can show you some of the differences between them we've got the bridge rectifier which we've already dis discussed in each case this capacitor here is what we're adding in this one is a thousand microfarad this one is 2200 microfarad and this one is 3300 whoops microfarad now the bottom line here is the higher the capacitance or the more microfarad that you add in and the pretty much is not really a limit the longer the light or oh, sorry the longer the led or the leds will stay on it's a simple rule really uh, the only problem you've got is of course that they get bigger in size and you may be restricted to room inside the lo the coach or the locomotive blah 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 but basically that's three most popular type sizes that you can use and i'm going to demonstrate these to you now how it works and right before we get to the concluding section there's a little something extra that you really need to learn about so uh, please bear with me okay 
right from the very beginning of this video and right up to now uh, excluding the part at the beginning where we used ordinary bulbs when we go into the leads section and from there to here where we are right now and um, I quite often said to you we've got the short leg and the long leg on the LEDs I'm sure you can probably remember that but now here's where you need to learn why the short leg is the negative it is called the cathode but it's the negative of the LED the long leg is called the anode and that is the positive of the LED on the diode which we've used for uh, reverse bias to help protect LEDs when the voltage is reversed and um, the positive is the one with the line on it just there so obviously this is the negative end here same thing applies to the bridge rectifier although I did point that out to you rather shortly ago and um, that is clearly marked as negative with a single line and positive with a plus the capacitor which we're now into the part of the video where we're going to be using them applies the same it has the short leg and the long leg and the short leg is, is the negative and if I turn it sideways it's always marked with an arrow pointing downwards at the short leg just in case you've cut the long leg off and they're both the same length that will actually show you that this leg is the negative so basically with LEDs and anything that you add in like capacitors diodes and bridge rectifiers it's imperative that the negatives stay as they are so negative is the short leg on the diode on the LED sorry negative is the opposite end of the line on a diode negative is clearly marked on the bridge rectifier and negative being the short leg on the capacitor which is also clearly marked with an arrow pointing down to it it's really important that you get that in mind and you remember that all the time when you're doing anything with leds okay everyone so here you are we have a strip of leds which you saw earlier where everything is exactly the same they are connected to the bridge rectifier here sorry it's down a frame there uh, the bridge rectifier here which is exactly the same as it was a short while ago it will work both ways forwards and backwards on the control we know that but now we've added in the capacitor which is here now this one is a thousand microfarad it's, it's quite a low figure obviously now what i'm going to show you you're going to quite be amazed with watch if i turn the control one way we've got the leds obviously we go the other way we've got the leds which we know because the bridge rectifier is keeping that correct for us and um, the only thing is if we turn the control off they fade pretty quick which is quite the norm the capacitor is holding it a little bit but at this moment in time i do have the potentiometer turned up to full brightness now this you're going to find really interesting if i now just turn the potentiometer fully the opposite way for minimum brightness okay doesn't matter whether we go that way or that way on the control lock they're not going to change they're staying on now but watch this because i have now reduced the um, voltage onto the leds there using our potentiometer or stroke dimmer watch what happens when i turn the controller off that's off look at that now what's happening here is because the leds are on a lower voltage the capacitor is able to hold the charge and much longer because we've added this resistance in here of the 5000 ohms and you can see that clearly would not flicker if we go like that way that way that way that way it's not going to flicker so the more resistance you have feeding the led or the leds in question the longer it will stay on now listen this is a thousand microfarad can you imagine how long it would stay on with a 3300 I'll let you choose I'll let you I'll let you use your own initiative on that one but that's how it works doing the same experiment again but this time with our single LED and back to the original circuit as you know with the 20,000 ohm uh, potentiometer the bias resistor and the uh, reverse bias diode and um, yeah we've still got the thousand microfarad capacity here but this time we've only got one LED and not six so look this is a full brightness so if I turn the control off now you see it's fading but it's very slow it's really taking its time to go down but watch this if i that now turn the control to the dimmest brightness the switcher on okay she's fairly dim at that in fact she's quite dim at that but now watch when i turn the control off 
<sighs> yeah, I can have a smoke and a drink of whiskey and it's going to stay on for ages because there's less resistance which means it's drawing less current which means it stays on a lot longer and again this is a thousand mic capacitor what would it be like with 3300? Well I can tell you what it would be like you'd be able to stop at a station for a while at least you know a good few minutes it's starting to fade a bit now but you'd be able to stop at a station for quite a while with the higher capacitance uh, of 3300 and it would stay lit until you're ready to move the train on so look that's it that's how it works that's how you have it it's all down to you now to put it all into practice and just before we get into the final uh, section of the video uh, let me just point out to you that whatever capacity you use whether it be a thousand mic or three thousand three hundred or more blah 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 and um, they all need to be rated at 16 volts minimum um, you can get higher voltage of course 20 volts blah 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 but uh, the bigger the voltage the bigger the capacitor is so you, you might struggle with a, um, you know being able to fit them in place so 16 volts is your minimum it will be the smaller size and it's a bit of a balance between you know the value of the capacitor and getting it to fit into the coach or the locomotive or whatever so yeah uh, make sure that you uh, definitely get 16 volt caps the other thing I wanted to say here is yes we solder the capacitor onto the rectifier yep positive to the positive negative which is the shorter leg onto the negative of the rectifier like that but there is no rule of thumb of where you actually fit them it doesn't matter if the bridge rectifier is at one end of the coach and the capacitor is at the other end of the coach as long as you connect the wires correctly you know positive to positive negative to negative it really doesn't matter where you physically mount any of these items you can mount it directly horizontally like that onto the rectifier or you can mount it vertically onto the rectifier it really doesn't matter where you put them as long as you connect them together directly in the correct fashion with the polarity correct and the final thing again before we get to the end of the whole session is this this is now a typical board that you can buy ready made up I'm going to zoom in on this for you a little bit more so there, there we are we should see it all right there now um right this is a, a little board which is ready made up it's easily available you can buy it virtually anywhere um it has two ballast resistors there and it has two <laughs> leds there a red and a yellow and it has a red and a yellow there and to give you some kind of scale to the size of this board and these leds hell they are so small look at this that's a match head oh look at that now i'm going to show you this board can be fitted into you know pretty much anything locomotive whatever dummy whatever so turn the controller one way and we have the green lights turn it the other way and we have the red lights and this is so simple and so cheap so you know this is where we're at with technology in 2017 that is brilliant those leds are so small and they are perfect i mean come on that is brilliant it really is okay we're at the end guys and so everyone there you have it um i think i've covered virtually everything um yes i've covered some of these things before in other videos maybe three or even four on various uh, lighting led stuff etc etc but i've never covered the whole thing in one fail swoop and i thought it would be better to do so because it gives you the how do you, how do you word this it gives you the story from the very beginning and all the way through right up to the end which is here showing you the various things that you can do that you can't do and how they work and the way they work i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's been helpful to you and um, i fully understand that people who have no knowledge or experience with uh, electrical things and electronics like i do myself um, i know it can be daunting and this is why i've tried to express everything and explain everything in the best possible way to just try and make you understand and and let you understand and hopefully give you that confidence to have a go at doing a few things for yourself it really isn't that hard and again i know through experience it's easy to say it but I think it's worth you having a go at some of these things I'm here for you if you're stuck and you don't, don't quite understand anything I'm quite happy to answer your comments and answer your questions it's not a problem uh, time permitting of course um, but 
again like I say I hope you've enjoyed the show and I hope that it's been helpful and all I can say is I've got part three of the uh, uh, locomotives and trains in films it's already on the ball it's already partly laid out on the layout it's going to be a cracker so don't don't miss it can't afford to miss that and um, so and last thing before we go I need to just show you one more thing you remember if we go back to to this circuit i'm going to move everything else out of the way here so get it so you don't see hang on let's get it all out of the way right and get the get the bit i'm trying to look for where, where's it gone disappeared i've lost it oh it's here hang on <laughs> right here we go look you you may remember this this circuit here which is the two leds opposite to each other remember one's soldered backwards to the other one you've got the balance resistor and this is the one where it reverses with the controller for front and back lighting for forward and rear, and rear motion yes that that does work fine but i didn't put the reverse bios diodes across this so you will possibly need to do that just to help the leds uh, get protected the only thing is that it's worth mentioning to you if you use a circuit with a uh, a capac uh, rectifier and a capacitor like this you can't use it on this because with the output of the rectifier being the same way every time with the controller that would be no good for us here because it wouldn't reverse and we're, we rely on the reversing of the controller to switch between the two LEDs here so other than that you know you can't use that circuit on a reversing pair of LEDs like that but other than that well that's it i'm going i've had enough i'm gonna have a whiskey and uh, smoke i know it's bad but yeah whatever i'm enjoying myself and i'm happy see you everyone bye